Hey guys, this is Dan Lukart from Brea Jiu Jitsu, and welcome to the second part of my King and Cornelius study. Um, what I've kind of decided the goals for this uh, whole process would be is to um, first kind of collect raw data about uh, Keenan and his game, and then begin to assemble it um, into a, a teachable system, which I incorporate into my own game. So that's kind of the goals from this uh uh, type of study as well as kind of just sharing some some observations about Keenan. So um, let's continue onwards and let's look uh, on YouTube. We met, we analyzed one um, one tournament campaign of uh, the 2013 uh, West Coast Trials. Um, so it might be kind of a good idea to to get some other tournaments as well. Let's do uh, Keenan Cornelius versus Gianni Grippo. And this will probably be a pretty interesting match because we saw Keenan use the bottom position in, in all of his matches, and I think it's because it was his black belt debut. At least I think it was his black belt debut, and he was probably playing it a little bit more safe. Now, this match here, we can probably expect to see a guard pull from Gianni and a little bit of Keenan's top game because Gianni's somebody that will pull guard and not be afraid to work double guard pull. And Keenan doesn't like the double guard pull as much as uh, as some other positions. And so we see the guard pull for, from Gianni. Now Gianni is working, um, yeah, he's working a very standard uh, daily heave guard position. We saw Keenan himself use this position where you're hugging the ankle instead of just grabbing it or using like that Leandro grip. So he's hugging the ankle and grabbing the collar. This is kind of uh, contemporary jujitsu. Uh, exemplified here in Johnny in this position. So Keenan's taking his hand and pushing down on the De La Hiva hook, which alleviates some of the pressure on, on his knee there. And probably, uh, judging by Keenan's leg positioning here, he's going to want to step over the leg and begin to get in tight or a passing sequence. So let's see if he can do that. So right there, <laughs> right there, it looked like a... Keenan thought about stripping that belt grip. Uh, looks like maybe he wasn't the first to try that. Gianni's hand is pretty aggressively taped up there. Um, but that is a very tough grip to strip, in my experience. So here Keenan steps over the leg. Go back a little bit. Keenan steps over that leg. And Gianni does something very cool in that right as he steps over, this is a straight Mendez Brothers technique, he puts in that reverse daily heave hook and he pulls forward with the belt in his reverse daily heave hook and extends his leg over. You see that positioning, how he's bringing his legs to his chest to get Keenan to go this way, to base with his arm so that he can pull out his leg and hopefully return to the daily heave guard position. Yeah, And that's the, it's kind of an interesting point of discussion about uh, you know, that being a Mendes Brothers technique, is that you see the Mendes Brothers be very successful and start their own uh, online academy and have a lot of access to their training methods and techniques. Um, and they almost become victims of their own success in many ways because a lot of people, like Gianni, a lot of up-and-coming people study their games. And we saw Keenan kind of use a similar, similar game, which I think he's been using for longer than just training with Atos. So Keenan again steps over the leg, but this time he's able to kind of uh, push his leg a little bit more so that Gianni's hips are at the wrong angle to do that, and Gianni let go of the of the uh, De La Hiva, uh grip and is grabbing the collar and probably going to try and make space. So Gianni working the reverse De La Hiva, and right there he's trying to spin underneath. Um, from this position, a similar position from the reverse De La Hiva, in the previous tournament that we analyzed, we saw Keenan do um, a long step pass attempt. It was one of the few passing attempts that we saw, so it obviously sticks out in my mind. But from that position, it was the, um, the foot on the bicep control, and it made it a little bit more challenging for, for Keenan to do that. So let's see if he incorporates more long stepping into his passing. This is a good position for long stepping, and I can kind of see by how he's positioning his legs um, that he wants the long step because this arm underneath the leg will make it very difficult for him to follow and recompose the guard. 
Yeah, and there we see that long step attempt where he sits on his on his hip and kicks his leg up very wide. Now you have a couple of options from this position. Uh, Keen is trying to bury his head down and uh, and establish the guard pass. Um, you can also walk north south and maybe even all the way over to the other side. So he's pressuring in, pressuring. We're walking to the other side. Hang on, let me see something crazy here. Johnny's recovering the guard. Let's see what... <laughs> so, pretty impressive move. Let me get another look at it. So he's essentially jumping on the back from that position. Using his... Because uh, you can get into that exact same position from the the Barambolo using uh, leg work to get there from the Barambolo position so he may be drawing upon those skills um, let me see if I can uh, draw up a match uh, that uses that same technique uh, if I can recall I'll edit it out if, if I'm not able to find the match I saw this uh, uh, from Shinya Aoki, the Baka Survivor. Baka Survivor, baby. I think it was this match. It says uh, 2011 upload date, but I don't think that's accurate. I think this was in the... Uh, if I recall correctly, it was a very similar situation in which he just kind of uh, jumped over his upside down guard and uh, took the back. Let me see if I can find it. I think it was after this here. Cartwheel pass attempt, pretty cool. Uh, Aoki's on the top here, yes. So here, um, we're seeing uh, the opponent inverting. Controlling the legs. And watch like the forward roll. You see how you get the hooks in there. Let me make it bigger so you guys can see a little bit better. Inverting, so kind of a similar style that Johnny was using. I'm sorry, people use suggested to me that I use the space bar to start and stop, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. It's sometimes it doesn't select my uh, pause button, so I apologize for that. I'm aware of it and it's very annoying for me. So here he's controlling both legs, and look how he's uh, jumping both feet in and doing like a forward roll and then beginning to get up on the back position. So that's kind of a cool uh, parallel between, probably unrelated, between Aoki. So Keenan ends up coming on top, just like you can in, in a Barambola position. You can come on top in a leg drag, and that's essentially what Keenan did, even though his knee is not through. This is essentially like a leg drag-like position. And Keenan working to establish here. Johnny looking like he wants to turtle from this position. And Keenan's very good at taking the back uh, from when the guy turtles. Uh, looks like he recovers using the thumbnails. Now we're in more of a classic leg drag position where uh, Keenan's knee is through. And look how he's using his elbow to push down the, the leg. Some people, uh, like myself, if I can, I like to, to stick the leg under my armpit, but this is a really good option. Especially with people with shorter legs, because shorter leg people tend to have shorter, uh, what is that, the femur bone, and sometimes they can slip out of that a little easier. And using that, that forearm to push down in the leg drag position is kind of nice. Johnny did a nice job of uh, pushing off uh, Keenan's belly with his uh, free leg and making some space. So we get to see a little bit more of Keenan's passing, which is kind of nice. So I was kind of rooting for Johnny to to uh, to be able to pass. Johnny looks like he's trying to wrap up the ankle here. Keenan steps out. It's hard to see with the referee that kind of grips. Uh, Keenan just doing the same thing. So we're learning about Keenan's passing right here. We're learning a lot because now I've started to establish a pattern. Step over the leg by killing the Dale Heva hook. 
But that's kind of obvious. More important than that, what does he try after? And he's doing that underhook again uh, on the leg right here to potentially work a long step pass. So, from the reverse daily heave guard. So there he tries like almost an X pass. He tries to kick his leg backwards. So I'm forming in my mind like a, the system in which Keenan uses the most common moves. Yep, there was the X pass again. And working to just uh, kind of complete like almost like a Toriando finish. Again, bearing the head. This is a pretty cool sequence. This one you could watch probably a few times and, and get a lot out of it. Because at some point he ends up, he tries to leg drag a uh, Toriando pass right there. Let me watch it one more time. Let me get another go at it. Right there he tried to leg drag, leg drag the other side. And then he gets control of both, uh, both uh, the legs and ends up Toriandoing or attempting to Toriando pass the guard. Gianni's trying to roll back, and Keenan takes the, uh, the uh, it looks like a quarter guard, what it looks like to me. So, um, I noticed a very similar passing style to Leandro Lowe there, um, where you're working kind of a posture up and throw the leg to one side, posture up, throw the leg to the other side, grab both legs, and, and uh, end up uh, Toriando passing. Yeah, and it was correct with the, the quarter guard position. So it looks like uh, Gianni's working a pretty good deep half guard position. So he's uh, probably going to... Let me. I don't know Gianni's deep half guard game very well, but it's, it's kind of interesting that we see Keenan sitting on his hip and uh, getting the hand in the collar. It does look like the collar is fed. Uh, for Gianni, so it looks like he's working like the Bernardo Faria, which would kind of make sense, the Marcelo Garcia to uh, Bernardo Faria influence in, in Gianni. Let's see if Keenan's able to get out of this position. This is not a great position. So, interesting here is that Gianni's trying to do the, the, the standard one where he puts his feet on the ground and uh, come on top essentially and it looks like Keenan just uh, timed that moment and freed his leg yeah freed his leg to mount you see Bernardo in this position um, a little bit where the guy is able to step over and he's able to come out the maybe the back door and complete a sweep or recompose um, I think Keenan's going to need to bring his leg all the way around to the other side if he wants to recover here. Yeah. He does. He's bringing the leg all the way around. So a very interesting uh, type of deep half guard counter. And it looks like he's pressuring in. He looks like a, his, his uh, pressuring style is turning up the pace and is kind of being successful at this point. Keenan's looking for his points there to secure and rolls to the back. Now, <laughs> as we saw before, that was a pretty aggressive roll to the back. And I mean aggressive in the sense that he didn't have necessarily the best control when he rolled to the back. He's got the, the choke in here, but without such good control of the length, and especially looking at the length of the match, I think he's just not caring that Gianni might come on top because he's got his points um, and... And then he can work from his best position, which is the guard, with Gianni re being required to initiate uh, guard passing. Keenan uh, getting a little bit better position here. So it's not... <laughs> indeed, as predicted. So it's not like Keenan does this on purpose. He just attacks, 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 and just has a lot of confidence in his guard if he falls off the back, I think. So here, um, from a strategy standpoint, it's interesting because Gianni is required to engage Keenan and not the other way around. So Keenan is essentially forced bottom position by falling off the back. Being the bigger guy, um, he probably has a pretty uh, solid advantage in the guard position against Gianni because his guard is excellent and Gianni's smaller so the combination of the two are, are not good 
because Gianni is primarily a bottom guy, even though he's obviously uh, well-rounded in all aspects. Let's see what Keenan was working there. I didn't quite see it. Ah, we see the uh, that shin to shin. So that seems to be a reoccurring theme of Keenan's game, where his foot is on the bicep. We didn't get a good angle on this, so I can't see his right hand or left hand grip at this time. But he's circling in and getting the shin to shin, and it looks like he lifted it and tried a triangle. Yeah, he lifted it, and then he tried the triangle with this one, this leg here, shooting it over really quick. It looks like Gianni secured double underhooks, but I can't tell. Now here, it looks like uh, Keenan's both hands are setting up a T-peak choke. Um, this is a choke that that I know uh, players like Mackenzie Dern like a lot. Um, this type of TP choke from the double underhook position. So essentially, you get the grip on the guy's neck and then pinch your, your knees into the choke. And it's a very, very effective and fast choke. I've seen Keenan hit a few very interesting, I don't, know, I don't know if you can call them variations of this choke nogi. And I don't know if TP choke is a, is a uh, common name in the jiu-jitsu community. So Gianni's trying to stack him <laughs> very aggressively. This, these type of positions make me uncomfortable. And I mentioned in one of my other instructional videos that uh, Keenan versus Jackson Souza had a similar position of Keenan. I think he was on the grips here. He switched the grips from the TP choke where he got stacked on his head and I thought that he was going to be knocked unconscious. But he's very flexible and he uses his legs. That's, this is pretty cool. He uses his legs hitting the mat. Watch, watch Keenan's legs hit the mat over the top. You see here to avoid being uh, stacked too much on the neck. And here it looks like he's going to have enough space. So he has the control of the, of the sleeves. And he's going to work in his foot back on the bicep and recompose the guard. So we've learned he will try. And uh, the, the TP choke, we've also learned that he likes defending the, uh, recomposing the guard with the double sleeves from when he's double underhooked. And we learned a cool way from which he is maintaining his position. So I thought he was going to recover guard right there, but he didn't. Yeah, foot on the bicep and back into a normal attacking sequence. Looks like we're gonna get an adjustment on the belts and all that and a reset. Interesting, I didn't think that was the position in which they ended. Could be wrong. That's the thing about resets, sometimes you don't get a very good reset sometimes. Keenan still, yeah. This is really something that, you know, he's after. It's not just he tried it once and is moving on. He's after that, that TP choke from here. Johnny's tucking his, his chin very nicely. So let's see what is to come of this double under. Here Keenan's working it, exactly like I said, you, you force, he's crossing his feet because he wants his knees to pinch together on, those, on that choke. But I think it looked like Johnny's chin was tucked pretty good. But you know what? That's an interesting uh, outcome there because even though the choke wasn't uh, necessarily close, it caused him to disengage the, the double underhooks. And if we just look at the results of Keenan's submission attempt, it got him into a very strong position for him with that uh, daily heave up with grabbing the ankle, something we saw Gianni use earlier in the match. Uh, Gianni working a quick leg drag here. That was a good passing attempt. Maybe rolling for a toe hold, perhaps? Yeah, he thought about rolling for a toe hold, I think. If I hadn't paused it there, I might have missed it. Leg drag. Yeah, he was thinking about about attacking those legs. And Keenan ends up coming on top. Let me watch from, I was watching from Gianni's perspective. So let me watch from Keenan's perspective for a moment. Yeah, I think as he was rolling for, for the feet, uh, Keenan was trying to take the back. So I think that situation was initiated by Gianni. And Keenan's coming on top here. Reverse De La Hiva guard again. Yeah, so okay, that was a very nice sequence. He, he worked his shin on the inside and obviously he's clearly trying to, to long step out of it. So let me analyze that sequence. 
Because reverse daily Hebrew guard, that's awesome. So he's bringing the shin on the other side. Watch this, watch his left leg. He brings it on the inside to kill a little bit of the reverse daily Hiva hook. Let's look at his hand positioning. So it looks like he's grabbing the collar and maybe even the leg, I'm not sure. Can't see it. And that kind of uh, loosens things up for him. Yeah, it looks like he's controlling the leg to do that long step pass. So at this point, I gotta say that long step, leg drag, Toriando swarm is Keenan's, uh, Keenan's passing style because we've seen it too much to for it to just be one of the mini techniques. <laughs> this, I saw first in the Kumite, this style from the top of really working those submissions where he's, where he's literally jumping on him and looking for a triangle armbar combo. Interestingly enough, I've seen uh, Aoki do that a number of times too. I think in that same match, let me, let me go earlier. In the same, this is the one that I pulled up before. I wish I had thumbnails on this. Yeah, cool. I guessed correctly. I remember it being at the beginning of the match. So watch this. Sitting to that. I guess it's a little bit different, but controlling the, the sleeve and, and essentially jumping on the guy trying for an iron bar. Um, it was already up, and I know, remember it from being in that match. I might as well just kind of reference it. But I noticed it in the Kumite where he just... Uh, he basically do the, the Mark Hunt atomic butt drop on the guy, working for a submission. It's pretty cool style. It's kind of scary if you're not used to it. Just have a guy jump on you and try essentially a flying triangle from the top position. This Hallmark Keenan Cornelius. I haven't seen this from anybody else ever, so I think this might be an interesting, uh, interesting Keenan contribution. Is that I call it the Keenan stomp leg drag. Um, I've analyzed it before, the Paulo Meow, I think it was Paulo's guard, is where he has no gripping situation, and he uses his uh, long legs, short leg people can do it as well, atomic butt drop submission. He takes his leg and he stomps on the inner part of the guy's leg, and we talked about how Keenan uses his arms, Gianni is, using his arms behind his legs, and I talked about how that reinforces the hips from going from side to side. So essentially what Keenan does is he takes advantage of people um, maybe not using this and stomping the leg down, which causes the, the hips to go like this, turn to the side, and you're ready for the leg drag on the, this leg here that's on this side. So in this case, Gianni's uh, right leg. Interestingly enough, this is... Uh, one of my wife's favorite passes, just a random technique, uh, random, <laughs> random splurge. She was quite good at it. And we, we got good at it with uh, studying Keenan, of course. Because, like I said, I hadn't seen that anywhere before. Before that actual match, I'm not, I think this was, uh, this was after that Paulo match. It could have been Joao. I still have trouble. I, I'm a big fan of both of those guys, and I still have trouble telling them apart. Now, this is kind of cool. Keenan went over the arm. There's two reasons why he went over the arm, at least in my opinion. Um, reason number one, sorry. Reason number one, I'll keep continue talking as I find the spot in the video. Reason number one is that, um, here we are, is that Gianni still has a grip on Keenan's arm, so you're pinning it down so you can rip your grip free, but it also has a secondary function of any time you pin the guy's arm when you're passing, let's say a double underhook stack pass, or just the regular stack pass, where you go under one one leg, is that it prevents him from turtling. And uh, previously in the match, Gianni had turtled, so it's a good counter to that type of situation. And once you kind of establish, you can let go and just continue with whatever it is you like, jujitsu-wise. So here in the side control, this could be the, the end of the match here. Let me just kind of scroll through. Yeah, it looks like... Uh, that's the pretty much the end of action. So we'll move to on to another match here. Let's just use the.